This is Democracy Watch. So Mark, some news out of Virginia, which is especially important right now, given that we're only a few weeks away from the state legislative elections uh, in that state. So first off, uh, Virginia has illegally removed thousands of voters from the rolls. Were these valid removals? And if not, is there any way to rectify this issue? Yeah, these were not valid removals. These were illegal removals, illegal removals. Even the Republican uh, officials in the state, because the state has a Republican governor, a Republican lieutenant governor, or Republican attorney general, even they acknowledge this. these removals were illegal. And it is a serious, serious business because when people are removed close to an election, it can have consequences in the outcome of those elections. And one of the contexts that I want everyone to pay attention to is that right now, the Virginia state legislative elections, which will take place in, a, in only uh, a few weeks, um, will decide control of both chambers. They are both very evenly divided chambers. A, a couple of seats um, divide uh, Democrats and Republicans. Right now, Republicans control one, Democrats control the other. And Glenn Youngkin is trying to lull Virginia voters into giving him full control of the legislature. And if he does that, he's going to uh, enact all kinds of terrible legislation. So when you hear about these voter purges that were a big oopsie, just keep in mind what the stakes are. And, and now, is there any way to rectify this issue moving forward? You know, one of the biggest disappointments has been to watch the Republicans who run not just the attorney general's office and the governor, but also have a majority on the state election board, um, them slow walk this. So like on the one hand, they acknowledged because it was <laughs> there was no defense uh, that it was illegal. But, you know, they have not moved with the kind of speed and dispatch that is that 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 democracy requires, that voting rights uh, requires. And so remedying this is going to be very, very difficult um, uh, pre-election. Uh, but uh, I know there are lots of groups out there who are putting pressure on the state and the county boards of election um, and are trying to do as much voter education as they can. And I'm sure as soon as we have an update, it'll be covered in Democracy Docket. So for anybody who wants to learn about whatever news we have on this first, make sure to sign up for Democracy Docket. The link is right here on the screen. It's also in the post description of this video. Mark, uh, something tells me that the names that were removed from the rolls in Virginia tend to vote for a certain political party. Am I am I hovering over the target here? I think you likely are. I mean, it's it's always hard to know for sure. And Virginia doesn't have formal party registration. But I, I think it's fair to say that when you look at the demographics or the and the, more importantly, the geography, that that that's right. And again, this the, these are off year state legislative elections. And so you have low turnout anyway. And when you discourage um, vulnerable communities, you know, first time voters uh, uh, and other voters who already may be facing barriers with this kind of thing. It 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 really can have a detrimental effect on the outcome of this election and also people's confidence in voting in the future. Well, to that point, do any voters who want to vote but have been removed, do they have any recourse right now or, or are they going to get to election time and they're just going to be kind of shit out of luck? So here's my advice. If you are a a if you are in Virginia and you are registered to vote and you want to vote, number one, you should check to see if you're if you're still registered, right? You, that you can go online and you can check that. But if you show up at the polls and they say you are not in the books, insist on voting a provisional ballot. Um, that ballot, you know, will then go through a long post-election process, but at least there will be at that point people fighting for your vote to be counted. So don't just walk away. Don't just shrug your shoulders, um, but make sure you you document the fact that you um, that you should be registered, you know, uh, have your registration card or whatever, and and make sure you cast a provisional ball a okay. ballot. Now, there's also been controversy surrounding a conservative effort to recruit poll watchers in that state. Can you explain what's happening here and the legality of these moves? Yeah, Brian, I think this is probably going to be the first of many conversations you and I have on this topic, um, because I think that as we head towards 2024, this issue of how Republicans will seek to intimidate people at the polls, how they will seek to challenge voters' eligibility at the polls in advance is really going to be one of the most important narratives for 2024. So what's going on here is that um, conservative activists are using the, this off-year election for state legislature in Virginia as kind of a proving ground, a testing ground. So they want to 
they want to obviously affect the outcome of the of the Virginia elections. But what they really want to do is build a model that they can then use elsewhere. And so they are recruiting large numbers of partisan activists to go into the polling place to be right up as close and they say you know as close as legally allowed um so that they can be their presence can be intimidating to election officials make the job of election workers harder uh and also send a message to voters so this is something we're going to have to counter uh, uh in a lot of different means i've brought litigation against this kind of stuff before in those cases you can find a democracy docket but i think we're going to find that this is a dominant narrative that you and i are going to visit and revisit over and over again now you mentioned different ways to combat this obviously the 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 judicial avenue is one but is there any appetite among democrats or democratic groups to kind of flood the zone with poll watchers who are also going to just do it in a virtual way to kind of combat just this this deluge of Republican sure. poll watchers who are there yeah. to intimidate so I, look, I, Yeah, so look, I'd expect that you're going to see Democrats trying to, you know, give voters assistance and 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 make sure that that voters have an opportunity to um, uh, to vote. So that's part of it. Part of it is, as you say, is going to court. You know, last cycle, we were able to successfully challenge some of these efforts in some states. Uh, but there's also a big public awareness campaign that will be necessary is so that when people show up and they see more people mulling around, that it doesn't intimidate them that they know that they know what their rights are. They have essentially a voter's bill of rights. You know, they know, okay, I have a right to vote and these people may be there, but they're, but, but they can't affect my ability to vote because I think part of what these right wing lawyers, and we've talked about who some of them are, uh, you know, want, whether it's preventing college kids from voting on campus or these poll challenger programs, poll watcher programs, um, are really creating a hostile set of environment that that people, whether they're students or first time mm -hmm. voters or uh, minority voters, they're just like, you know what, I don't need this trouble. Why am I going to get? Why am I going to put myself in the middle of a controversial situation? So we need to educate them. Right, perfectly put. Um, you know, th this one was surprising here. So even the Republican Attorney General has taken steps to stop right wing groups from disseminating false election information. So what have these groups been doing? And I guess to to, the, to your previous point, what should people look out for now? Yeah, so we are in the midst of a, a crisis of disinformation. I mean, I think people know that. I think that they see that across a range of issues, you know, domestic and foreign policy and all kinds of things. But one of the biggest crises of disinformation that we uh, are going to see and are already seeing is around the rules of elections. So you have these right wing organizations that are simply spreading lies by telling voters that if they vote or if they don't vote, uh, you know, depending on what they're trying to do, that that you know they can lose government benefits, they could get arrested, you know, and it's just terrible. You know, we've seen we've seen the Department of Justice bring some criminal prosecutions in the most egregious cases, uh, but combating this kind of misinformation and disinformation is going to fall on the attorneys generals, the county prosecutors lawyers like me and 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 others who follow this but also Brian people like you who are getting the word out to people don't be lie don't believe the lies if someone tells you that election day has been moved don't believe them it's a lie yeah. if they tell you that you'll lose benefits if you vote don't believe them it's a lie so i i think that that's going to be a big task for 2024 yeah um, to that point, I guess, what should people know? What else should people know as we head toward November 7th in Virginia? What they should know is, first and foremost, that uh, they need to vote. If you live in Virginia uh, and uh, you are eligible to vote, you need to vote. You know, it is uh, it is it is a, a, a crisis of democracy that we have as much the voter suppression that we have. But it's also equally a crisis when so when people don't exercise the rights that they have. So don't be dissuaded. Your vote is going to matter. Your vote may determine the outcome of who controls the state house and the state senate. Which, by the way, if Glenn Youngkin controls all of government, he will he will um, he will restrict uh, reproductive rights. He will take steps to undermine education. Like all of the things that you talk about every day are on the ballot in Virginia, and in a low turnout election, please show up to vote. 
Perfectly put. We'll leave it there. Obviously, uh, Virginia will remain the center of the universe right now as we head toward Election Day. Again, Virginia is in an off-year cycle. So in just a few weeks from now, Virginia is going to have its legislative elections. And again, to Mark's point, the stakes couldn't be higher. Um, to follow along with everything that Mark is doing, Mark and his team are doing, make sure to sign up for Democracy Docket. It's the free news outlet he founded to focus on everything voting in elections. The link is right here on the screen. It's also in the post description of this video. I'm Brian Teller-Cohen. I'm Mark Elias. This is Democracy Watch.